Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well and waiting for another video on Space News. So, your wait is over, because I have come back with another crazy week of Starship updates. We will tell you in detail about SpaceX's Starship Stage Zero progress and all its important parts. Whether the launch tower, mount, propellant tanks, flame diverter system, we will cover all of that, so stay tuned. If you are unfamiliar with the story due to being here for the first time, SpaceX is working around the clock to prepare for its first orbital Starship flight test. It will be the first time the company launches the 394-foot-tall launch system comprised of the Super Heavy rocket and Starship spacecraft. The stainless steel vehicles will undergo a series of pre-flight tests meant to assess if all is ready for an orbital flight. During the debut orbital flight attempt, Super Heavy Booster 4 will propel Starship SN20 to orbit from the Starbase launch pad at Boca Chica Beach, Texas. Starship will continue its orbital flight above the Florida Straits, then re-enter Earth's atmosphere to splash down off the northwest coast of Kauai in Hawaii, near a military base. In a recent interview with science communicator Tim Dodd, everyday astronaut on YouTube, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said they do not plan to recover Starship SN20 during the first orbital flight. For the first orbital launch, our goal is to make it to orbit without blowing up, Musk told Dodd. And frankly, if the booster does its job and something goes with the ship, it will still count as a great progress. To be frank, if it takes off without blowing off the stand stage zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So, do not blow up on the stand, Musk added. He explained that stage zero is the launch pad support structure, which include the launch tower, mount, propellant tanks, flame diverter system, among many other things surrounding the launch pad. Musk said stage zero is much harder to build than a ship and booster. It is the company's largest building to date, and it will serve as a model for future ocean spaceports that Musk hopes to construct next year. SpaceX has made substantial progress toward the next Starship launch, which will see a prototype of the Mars-bound rocket fly into orbit for the first time. The launch tower was built using a gigantic Franken crane. The tower's principal objective, which is now nearing completion just a few months after construction began, is to provide a sturdy platform capable of steadying starships and super heavy boosters during final integration when the two stages unite to form one launch vehicle. The task of precisely mating two parts of what amounts to a 100-ton skyscraper will be significantly more difficult than it appears as it will be located within a stone's throw from the Gulf of Mexico on a windy Texas beach. The final segment of the orbital tower was stacked, and a 320-ton launch table was placed onto the orbital launch mount. These elements are still far from completion, however. The catching mechanism still needs to be installed on the tower, and a great deal more plumbing work is needed. QD swing arms. Soon after the launch tower was ready, SpaceX stacked its Starship vessel atop Booster 4 for the very first time. One month after, the company has installed the first arm on what amounts to the backbone of Mechazilla. At the end of July, less than four months of work, a team of SpaceX workers and contractors installed the final prefabricated section of the 145-meter, 475-foot-tall tower meant to support orbital Starship launches. SpaceX's first custom-built launch tower is a sort of backbone or anchor point for several massive mechanical arms that will accomplish the actual tasks of servicing and perhaps catching starships and super-heavy boosters. Work on all three arms expected to make up what CEO Elon Musk has described as Mechazilla has been visibly underway since the last week of June as a small army of welders carefully assembled dozens of sections of heavy-duty steel pipe into house-sized frames. Almost exactly two months later, SpaceX has installed the first of those three arms on the exterior of Starship's skyscraper-sized launch tower. Known as the tower's quick disconnect or QD swing arm, the standalone structure is reportedly designed to accomplish a few different tasks. First, as its unofficial name might suggest, the QD arm will hold a quick disconnect umbilical connector that will temporarily attach to the base of starships to load them with fuel, oxidizer and other consumables and link them to the ground power and networking. 
For years, it appears that SpaceX planned to field Starship upper stages through their super heavy boosters, which will themselves be connected to umbilical panels on a table-like launch mount that sits beside the tower. The Orbital Launch Mount In addition to the launch tower, the launch table is another important construction project that is being worked day and night to prepare for operations. The two main components in an orbital launch mount are six columns and an orbital launch table. The hexagonal symmetry up to the mount's foundation stack suggests that SpaceX's new Starship pad design will begin with the bare minimum required for a strong launch pad. SpaceX may change the design for Super Heavy, but the thrust section of the Starship is attached to a skirt with six strong sections that host the landing legs and hold the clamps. The sheer heft of tiled was 2 meters tiled, 6 feet wide steel and rebar columns filled with concrete and pilings, at least as wide and more than 30 meters deep. GSE Tanks Farm SpaceX has begun installing the first of numerous propellant storage tanks at its first orbital South Texas launch facility. A most ordinary and expected step made extraordinary by the fact that those tanks will be built out of Starship parts. Labeled GSE for ground support equipment, the first signs of those self-built storage tanks began appearing at SpaceX's Boca Chica facility in mid-February 2021. Over the last several months, while GSE tank production and installation took an unexpected hiatus, SpaceX workers slowly but surely welded steel rings, stiffeners, to the exterior of GSE-1, GSE-2 and GSE-3. When GSE-5 and GSE-6 eventually headed to the pad, they left with those stiffeners already installed, implying that whatever tripped SpaceX up was likely structural. The GSE-4 test tank also includes external stiffeners along each circumferential weld where rings were stacked or domes joined. SpaceX has sleeved one of its Starship-derived propellant storage tanks for the first time. Notably, SpaceX chose to manufacture those storage tanks itself and ended up building structures vertically identical to the tanks that already make up most of the flight-worthy Starship and super-heavy airframes. Depending on whether they were meant to store liquid oxygen or methane, the seven tanks SpaceX is building are either 26 or 30 meters tall. Though the concrete mounts they're affixed to at the launch site are sized such that all storage tanks will have the same final height. That's all for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, give it a like and let us know your opinion about it in the comments section down below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button for more interesting videos. Thank you so much for watching guys, until next time.